Hello and welcome to the Nashville Daily Podcast. I'm Stuart Deming. And I'm Aaron Pennington. Metro Parks returned $10 million to the city's general fund. We'll talk about their explanation for doing so. An old publication that dates back to the early 1900s is now resurrected. Plus, has Nashville taken the steps to bring NASCAR back for good? We'll talk about all of this and more on Nashville Daily. Today's episode is brought to you by Thinking Nashville, Thinking Brad. And of course, that's Brad Reynolds, a real estate agent here in Nashville, closing in on almost $200 million in sales. We want to reach out to Brad about moving here into Nashville or just switching locations. Nashville has a lot of great locations to be in. Nashville has a lot of bad locations to be in. So if you want to switch up those locations, you can call or text Brad at 615-856-3270. You can reach him uh, at Instagram at Brad underscore Reynolds underscore Nashville, or you can just go to thinkbrad.com. If you're thinking Nashville, think Brad. If you're a fan of Nashville Metropolitan Public Parks, there's been a lot of controversy with them recently. There's half of that that I'm a fan of. Yes, parks. Uh, the parks, not, <laughs> yeah, I understand. Uh, but there's been a lot of controversy recently. There's been a lot of finances moving within the parks. There's been a lot of the whole debate with the uh, Brookmead Park over in West Nashville and the homeless camp there and then all these fires that were caused in this homeless camp. There's just been a lot of conversation around this. <laughs> and Fox 17 uh, uncovered, this is the article, and this is, a very small thing that we're going to read from them uh, and then talk about one of their other parks that they're closing for a little bit. Fox 17 news uncovered more than $10 million that Metro parks returned back to the city's general fund. But then there's no other records of why they really returned that. Yeah. And there was a parks board member that really just kind of said uh, he's aware of it. It's went back all the way through 2019. It was all in the personnel category. Hmm. And he said the city was having some budget challenges and yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but this is very interesting because this is not like the first instant, uh, instance of uh, the Metro Parks having budget issues uh, all the way back in July of 2022. So this year, uh, News Channel 5 uh, had a lot of coverage on frustration between council members and Metro Parks because the parks had requested millions of dollars each year to hire new people, but Metro Park says they can't fill the positions. Uh, This is according to News Channel 5. uh, They they said council members uh, say frustration was was growing at the time as departments like these request even more taxpayer money each year with little or nothing to show for it. They did an entire News Channel 5 investigate on this, Uh, Because Metro Parks is requesting so much money, but they are having to close golf courses, which is funny that we're going to be talking about that here in a second, because they couldn't find any anybody to work it. But they were still requesting more money and more money and more money for things that never actually went into fruition as far as hiring. So the money just stayed in their budget and didn't actually get used for what they uh, thought it was going to. But it didn't get used for other things. So that's the other interesting thing. Like it didn't go anywhere else. Uh, maybe it got returned back to the city for it to go back into their general fund. But it's it's a very, very interesting, frustrating thing. But on the same day that a lot of this happened, uh, the Metro Parks Board approved a 3% merit raise and a 4% cost of living raise for their director. Um, and so... Yeah, it's... Uh... <laughs> this, this is all just very interesting. The question, uh, the question, the question that comes to my mind, has who has lost more money as a department metropolitan nashville police department or metro uh metropolitan nashville parks and recreation department in lost last, money last year lost money well or it returned depends, money yeah it, it depends of, on how you define their, out lost their, out of their budget lost uh police has had more i think pulled uh yeah. metro might have metro parks may have given 
Uh, or somebody, away. Somebody comment below who has those exact <laughs> numbers. I know it's tracked somewhere, but I don't want to look that up. Uh, but it's all it, it's really funny because they're actually closing a park over at the Percy Warner golf course. They're closing this now for a renovation. And this is going to be closed for 11 months. Yep. So it started this month. Uh, so if you plan to golf in this freezing weather over at Percy Warner golf course, then you will be very disappointed because it's closed. It, it is closed. This is a very historic golf course in Nashville. It should be open theoretically by September of next year. Did you know this golf course opened in 1937? Uh, I just I, found that out today. I did not. Well, I know it's been a while because it's taken apparently a decade of planning to uh, develop a public private partnership to complete the restoration project for, uh, for this. And uh, that was from Jenny Hannon, president of friends of Warner parks in a news release. That's a long time for a public <laughs> par- private partnership. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, way longer than the Tennessee Titans in the city. Yeah, yeah. I wonder well, why. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you you can kind of see. We'll we'll link an article in the show notes of all the renovations that are being done. Um, but uh, felt it uh, felt like we should have mentioned should mention it while we're talking about parks and uh, the 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 golf staffing issues and whatever is happening with the parks. It's all a mystery. There wasn't any conclusion in that Fox 17 article that, that there, we referenced there at the beginning. There's no conclusions for a lot of things with Metro <laughs> Nashville. Uh, <laughs> but there's a, a old publication that is coming back to life. This is the Nashville banner. Uh, at one point, there was five or six newspaper companies here in Nashville. Nashville banner was one of the most recognized newspapers. I believe they closed in the mid nineties. I believe 98, I believe the Tennessean bought them out at around that point. Uh, but it's coming back to life. It's a really interesting model. So I'm just going to throw up their, their website real quick and, uh, go to their homepage. They're a nonprofit news outlet. Uh, so who we are, so you can actually help them raise, and then you just you have your team. So you have a, a lot of uh, really famous people and editors that have been in the Nashville scene or Nashville based media for a long time that are going to be running this outlet. So they're also partnering with News Channel five for this. So it really allows them to get some resources uh, to help. They're going to be doing podcasts. They're also going to be doing longer stories. So things that are going to be produced that may take five, six, seven, eight minutes to because they have that kind of uh, because they're not uh, beholden to like television time. Uh, so they can kind of take their time on some stories. Uh, so they, they said their content is going to revolve around, quote, real people, true stories. That's the center of it. Um, but uh, they have podcasts that are going to feature uh, News Channel 5 journalism on their platform. Um, so this is going to be, I, th- I think, a pretty good partnership. And I'm excited to see. I don't know when they're going to start putting out content. 2023. Sometime 2023? 20, sometime in 2023. All right. So we'll be looking for it in 2023. Or you could just stay here at NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. <laughs> we'll read you the first with, article. We'll read you the first <laughs> article right here on this podcast and help resurrect this old publication. There you go. All right. And let's head over to Explorers National Tip of the Day. For Explorer Nash's tip of the day, it's a great day to head to this indoor facility called L&L Market located on Charlotte Pike in West Nashville. Uh, there's a lot to do there. There's a few shops there. There's a lot of food. You can get coffee. You can also get a beer, a donut, po- homemade Spices. pasta, a milkshake. That gifts, brings all the boys souvenir to the gifts, souvenir gifts, flowers, gourmet popcorn. Did I mention beer? And I'll mention more beer because it's a, a great brewery called, uh, I think it's Patriot Brewing Company. Yeah. And the cool thing that they do is they do, like, uh, American History Nights where they walk through, like, American history and stuff. It's fantastic. Uh, so if you're looking for a really cool Nashville experience, l l Market on Charlotte Pike. You need to add that to your Nashville bucket list. All right. And that is Explore's Nashville Tip of the Day. Now let's talk about a place where you can look good or 
exactly the place that makes you look good. This is <laughs> Bow Tie Barber Club, located in Donaldson. We know it's the time of the year where there's a lot of Christmas parties, New Year's parties, and you need to look fly. Maybe be meeting some new family members for the first time. You never know. Yeah. So you, you need a haircut. You need a beard shave. You need your ears waxed, your nose waxed, and so much more. <laughs> Visit BowtieBarberClub.com to get all that done. Get the works. Get the works. All right. So about a year ago, we have this episode linked in our show notes. About a year ago, the city of Nashville and Bristol Motor Speedway made an announcement that NASCAR will come back to NASCAR. No, NASCAR will come back to Nashville. To Nashville. At some point there in the you future. There you go. Yeah. At some point in the future. So we, we, we announced that back in the last December of 2021. Holy and cow. NASCAR has been here for a few years because they do their championship week in downtown Nashville and they do the burnouts on Broadway. And I believe that's also happening this year as well. If you have not been to the burnouts on Broadway, it's an incredible experience. Getting Will to this see be these their cars. third year? Third year, yeah. I believe they have My two gosh. more years that they're doing here. Uh, but the Tennessean recently reported that we may have an update on what this relationship with the city of Nashville and Bristol Motor uh, Speedway or sports uh, can blend together near the Nashville fairgrounds. I, I think that now that all the information on the Titans is out and the city said, hey, we, we've come to an agreement there and they're just basically waiting on contracts now in the Metro Council. They said, OK, now we can shift our focus over to NASCAR wait, wait, before they were like NASCAR. Hold up. We got the NFL to we, talk about, yo. <laughs> now we can talk about we NASCAR. We can talk about NASCAR. Uh, so as I just mentioned, uh, this was taken. Um, this agreement was basically made last December with Mayor John Cooper and his administration and Bristol Motor Speedway to overhaul Nashville Fairground Speedway. So if you want to learn about that, that deal, we have that in our archives and our show notes. Yep. So now let's go into this Tennessee article. A major step toward bringing NASCAR Cup Series racing back to Nashville, uh, Fairground Speedway was taken last Tuesday, I believe. Let's yes, see. you are correct. Yep. Last Tuesday, when the Metro Fair Board was presented with lease and development agreements between Metro Board and Bristol Motor Speedway to restore the historic racetrack. If, I, am I the only one who, I'm not a fan of the Metro Fair Board. I, Just in general, like why that, it, can somebody let me know in the comments why that exists? And I, I know, I, we, I, so I know that I know that we have a fairground, and I know, but we have other parts of Nashville. There's not an East Nashville board that has to approve everything that goes in. Yep. That's a Metro Council thing. That's a uh, there's there's a lot of other metro uh design centers and everything the normal steps so uh, it is very interesting to see that metro fair board is its own beast that things have to go through to get to the metro council first i feel like so it was established if i remember correctly and somebody comment below if i'm wrong on this uh or just comment in general it was established because of the tennessee state fair back in the late 1800s and so the Tennessee State Fair made the Nashville its home for over a hundred and some years. Sure. And then there was that whole controversy of them moving out to the Wilson County Fair. So did the Metro was stuff. the Metro Fair Board established to kind of secure the Tennessee State's Fair and rounds? Fairs. Yes. And yes. so I now that the Tennessee so. State Fair is gone, this Metro Fair Board somehow still has a hold on the area. Yep. It's very interesting. It's, it's very interesting. And we've we've been stopped on the street multiple times. And they're like, hey, let's talk about this Metro Fair Board thing. Like, it's been really interesting, uh, the debate hearing from both sides. And both of us, and I, I think I'm talking for you as well, Aaron, we have really no idea what this whole, like, debate was between them and bringing in the Major League Soccer Stadium and now this and well, so 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 that, that was when there was still a Tennessee State Fair. Yeah, downtown. So I think that was the big thing. Now, now I, I I wonder if Metro Fair Board is going to be as aggressive as stopping development as they were with trying to do that with Geodes Park. It wasn't even Geodes Park at the time. Um, so maybe without an actual Tennessee State Fair there on the grounds, they could dissolve. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, 
I don't know. Somebody, I, I don't know. Educate somebody us, probably, please. Somebody probably loves them. But I want to show this uh, image real quick. This is Greg the Google guy. He's hanging up above the Nashville Fairgrounds. Ooh, he's doing a fly-in? He's doing a fly-in. Nice. And so w what's really unique about this racetrack is this is a short track, and I believe the actual, like, diameter of the track is shorter than Bristol and I'm not a big NASCAR guy so I'm not exactly sure somebody comment below is Bristol shorter than the Nashville Fairgrounds I'm, I'm, I think by distance this is a shorter track okay but what's interesting about this NASCAR track is how close it is to the soccer stadium <laughs> how it's going to have all of this residential in this construction area that's currently being built right now yeah and how small the grandstand is yeah. compared to other NASCAR tracks. I yep. know when we talked about this almost a year ago, they were going to add a bunch of seats. I believe the Nashville Fairground Speedway only holds, if I remember correctly, it only holds maybe 15,000. And I think that's very generous. I can't remember the exact number. It's small compared to Daytona. It's small sure. compared to Bristol. It's small compared to... Uh, Walkins Glen Speedway sure. it's small compared to some of these other speedways found throughout the country. Yeah. And, and to to be fair, like NASCAR uh is not going to be the money maker right now in Nashville. Uh so a little history here that the Tennessee and gives uh the 118-year-old uh, National Fairgrounds Speedway. Wow. It is the second oldest continuous operating track in the United States behind Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It predates the Ryman Auditorium by one year. So 1891. Yeah, which is insane. They need to correct these dates. But it <laughs> has not hosted a NASCAR Cup Series since 1984. So if it was, Stuart, if I, if I were to say, hey, it's 1970, and yeah, we have 15,000 seats, I'd say, yeah, okay, that, that might be a problem. We need to get more seats. 2022, nobody's saying, we need more seats for NASCAR here in Nashville. That may, ch now with this new agreement, hopefully that that changes but before there wasn't really a whole lot of motivation to add those seats now we kind of have have the motivation so we have a rendering coming from uh, perkins and eastman on the tennessean article and you're going to see some renovations to this track if this actually comes so in the distance you can see all the apartment complexes that are being built right next to the soccer stadium and then you have this additional portion so this portion right here in the middle of the grandstand that's all completely new and then to the right hand side you have this brand new like that's probably like box offices and stuff or box suites to the right hand side yeah. of the development and what's going to happen is they're going to have to expand this track and what's really interesting is i was there for a race on they're going to expand the track so they're going to have to expand the middle of the track a little bit uh, because oh. I, I was there uh, for a race on September 17th and there was no tractor trailers inside of the racetrack for some of these trucks. And it, it, I know it's a regional it race. Does, and it it, it so, does look like that many tractor trailers would be a stretch Yes, to, so, fit, to, to, to fit it in this current, I know, the current one. I know there, there's going to have to be some fixes. And this is because it's such a short track. I don't know how many miles they would do or how many laps they would do for this race. Right. Uh, but the amount of accidents on this track uh, would make it a very intense NASCAR ra race. To it really, watch. Yeah, it really would. Uh, so Bristol Bristol Motor Speedway president and general manager Jerry Caldwell presented the proposal Tuesday, last Tuesday. Uh, Butch Beard and CEO of Nashville Convention and Visitors Corporation attended the meeting to support the proposal. I support it. So, <laughs> hey, support it. Support uh, the proposed renovation pending approval by the Fair Board. Yeah. Metro Sports Authority and Metro Council would That's enter. So many departments. It really is, <laughs> but it takes it, it's. A uh, uh, fair board, uh, uh, you can go away. Metro Sports and Authority Metro Council, I understand. Uh, so Metro Sports, Metro Council, fair board would enter Bristol Motor Speedway into a long-term contract to lease, manage, and maintain Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. So a long-term contract, for example, the Nashville Predators recently signed a 30-year contract with this new Titan Stadium. There's estimates that it would be a 35- or 40-year contract. Did you say Predators? The Nashville Predators for the 30-year contract. With yeah. Bridgestone. With Bridgestone, yes. yes. Uh, and then with the new stadium, it'll be a 35- to 40-year contract with the new Titan Stadium. Correct. Uh, so I'm uh, this 
if if the fair board signs this contract, does that mean they have to be around for the duration of I have this no new idea. contract? I have uh, all right, I'll, I'll I'll go back to the article. The proposal <laughs> would fund track renovations and ongoing maintenance, which it desperately needs. The bathrooms are disgusting, according to the Bristol Motor Sports uh, or Speedway. Speedway officials, and would not require any investment from the city's budget. Oh. Or obligationary, uh, how, how you say that word? Uh, just obligation debt. That's very interesting. All right. In, in a in a quote, uh, I want to make sure Jerry Caldwell is saying this. He's the president and general manager of Bristol Motor Speedway. Uh, he said, we're going to continue conversations with the fair board. We're going to continue conversations with Metro Council. And there's uh, this is a big step in that process. He said, this is a big step in being able to uh, revitalize that great venue and turn it into something that can not only save what is there, but make it better for the community as a whole, the racing community, and the folks who live around it. Uh, the proposal would complete the reimagined Nashville Fairgrounds campus and transform the Speedway facility into a year-round multi-purpose venue. Very, Which needs very to smart. Happen. It needs to have outdoor concerts. It needs to have everything. Yep. Nashville Fair Board Chair uh, Sherry Weiner said members of the board would be given time to review the deal and monitor public reaction before the board meets again in December. Sherry, we support it. <laughs> I support it. Uh, Sherry Weiner said in a quote, it's a long read. It is detailed. It answers a lot of questions that we've had. I look forward to us having the opportunity to hear from the public uh, once we've seen it and get this nailed down so that we exactly know what we're working on, what we're working with, and importantly, what impact it's going to be on the neighbors and its impact on the taxpayers. All right. So let's talk about some of this lease agreements. The proposed lease would be 30 years. Just like the Nashville Predators. Uh, there you go. The project would be funded by an upfront contribution of $17 million by the state of Tennessee. Okay. And $17 million contribution from the Nashville Convention and Visitor Corp. Okay. Metro Sports Authority would issue a 30-year revenue bonds there to we go. finance the renovation. Revenue there we go. Streams. I was about to say, $34 million was in, is definitely not enough for yeah. that. Because uh, that's just going to take it for the concrete to get fixed. Right, yeah. If you look at the Titan Stadium, the old one, <laughs> you understand why. Revenue streams for debt service and facility maintenance include include rent payments, taxes paid by venue uh, patrons, sponsorship agreements, and event revenue. Uh, right. Speedway Motors Incorporated, parent company of Bristol, owns 11 NASCAR Cup Series tracks, Do including National Super Speedway, home of Ally 400 NASCAR Cup Series race in Lebanon. Coldwell said the standard economic impact on a city with NASCAR Cup Series is $100 million annually. He said the National Convention and Visitors Corp commissioned a study with Oxford Economics in London that estimated a NASCAR Cup race with other events held at the fairgrounds venue would generate an estimated $200 million in annual economic impact for Nashville. All right, so I was wrong about the capacity. It currently holds 25000 The new grandstand will hold 30000 That's so a lot more have, than I thought. So you can have 30000 at the soccer stadium, 30000 at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. Wow. Imagine two dueling concerts happening at the same time <laughs> with an area that has terrible parking. Last week, we talked about the parking Yikes. issues at the Titan Stadium. So let us know your thoughts so uh, below this about will this be, NASCAR. This will be very interesting. Sound absorption features uh, would so be a installed. Nice, a nice wall. A wall. A uh, would wall. be installed in to reduce auto racing sounds by 50% wow. over current conditions. Bristol Motor Speedway officials presented an analysis by the Texas-based acoustical, uh, uh, acoustical engineering firm, uh, Wrightson Johnson Haddon and William Sink. What a name for that acoustical company, engineering right there, yes. firm, uh, which stated reduction is achieved through construction modifications and muffler requirements for non-NASCAR motorsports events. Uh, Cobble told the, the fair board his company worked with 25 nearby neighborhood community organizations, many of which had expressed concerns about the noise level that would be created by a renovated facility as it developed the plan. Additional multipurpose event facilities would also be built near the racetrack. All right, so, and then this is the schedule. Uh, NASCAR race cups, ra uh, event weekends, including local racing, would remain limited to 10 per year, as the same as they are now. Okay. <laughs> so let us know in the comments below, what are your thoughts? We have the new Titan Stadium that still not has been approved. We have the new NASCAR racetrack. They have the fair board has two to three months to review the proposal. There you go. Before they, uh, I think, request oh, more feedback. Before, so that's just the fair board. Then it goes to Metro Sports Authority and, Metro and then Council. Metro Council. 
It's going to be a long process, folks. Maybe another year before we even know if this is coming to Nashville. <laughs> Let us know in the comments what your thoughts are. There you go. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for listening to Nashville Daily. To learn more about today's episode, visit NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. And to stay connected, head to our Discord, and you can find the link at NashvilleDailyPodcast.com slash connect. Nashville Daily is now offering tours. If you'd like to take a tour of downtown Nashville, head to the link in the show notes or find out more details at NashvilleDailyPodcast.com. Nashville Daily Podcast is an Explore.Nash production, copyright 2022.